Hi, welcome to Secondary Math Methods. This is week six. This week we focus on assessment. And I want you to realize that assessment is more than just giving an exam or a test to see if the students have done the problems correctly or they've reached your goals. So there are four things that this chapter discusses in the book. And they're basically the uh, that uh, the purpose of assessment is to monitor students' progress. So this is a formative assessment. Uh, there are different types. It gives you, a, it's like a checkup to see how students are doing, to make an instructional decisions. Uh, you remember that teacher gave you the test and everybody failed and uh, he didn't take responsibility for it. So that would be an example of uh, instructional decision. If somebody, if some students don't do well in your class, you have to wonder, is it my instructional strategies? Is it the way I tested? Are the students unready? So you have to, uh, those are instructional decisions you can use based on an assessment. And then evaluating students' achievement, which is the more common use of assessment. And then evaluating programs. And you can evaluate the whole program, uh, your whole uh, curriculum of teaching math as well. And uh, so that's what this chapter is all about. But um, I'm going to talk a little bit about something that's dear to me. It's called reflective assessment. This is a PowerPoint that I made a while back. So I'll just be talking to you a little bit about that. So you can see it was done about four years ago, but it's still relevant uh, today. And so uh, the goals of this is to uh, to reevaluate, to rethink of your uh, assessment. And uh, what I mean by assessment is includes test quizzes and so on. But it's also assessing ourselves and seeing how we're doing as teachers. And it also gives the students the ability to think of their own uh, involvement in assessing. So that's those are the goals of this. So. The basic idea is to create behavioral objectives that can be evaluated with precision. And that's going to be the challenge for all of you as teachers, no matter what you're teaching, by the way. So you want, when you're creating objectives, you want the student to demonstrate, that's going to be a, a big verb, demonstrate that the objective has been reached. And it must include an action, okay, a verb, an action verb that demonstrates. And then you have to see what are the anticipated measurable performances. So that's going to be something that's measurable. So that would be a, a, diff a type of reflective assessment. So there are A, B, C, Ds of writing objectives. A stands for the audience. Who are you assessing? In most of us, for most of us, it's the student, or maybe if you're assessing a group. The expected behavior. What is it that you want your students to be able to do? the conditions and how are they going to do this behavior and the degree what is it that they have to do and how much do they have to do in order for you to believe that they have reached your objective that's probably the most difficult part of writing an objective so audience examples as I said the student which is the most common audience that's your person you're assessing the group or the company if you're doing a program assessment and here are the ex expected behavior examples. Notice how they're all action verbs. The student will apply, they will convert, they will predict, they will state, they identify, they will perform, uh, they will write, uh, they will dance if you wanted to do something really artsy. Uh, so those are some of the uh, examples of the behavior. And here are some verbs to avoid. You'll see this a lot in some, especially college professors who have not taken education courses, so I'll throw them under the bus. The student, look at the last one here. The students will be, will be able to understand uh, the concept. Well, how do you measure understand? See, that could be a goal of the course. They'll understand or realize or comprehend or enjoy. I can remember taking courses where the students will appreciate uh, this piece of work or this uh, art or book or whatever. How do you measure appreciation? Yeah, sure, it was great. Give me an A. So you have to avoid these words because they're not measurable. Okay, You have to be able to measure. So there's a little bit of math for you. Quantify it in some way. Rubrics, which we'll talk about, will be very important. Condition. How are they going to do this behavior? Are they going to put it on a piece of paper? Are they going to recite from memory? Um, are they going to be able to uh, uh, use uh, at some other creative way of, of uh, expressing their knowledge? So that's going to be something that shows up right in the middle of my screen there. Okay, we'll take that out. And so the degree examples, this is the most important most difficult part because you have as the instructor have to decide what level 
of understanding, of overall understanding, will they be able to uh, do their behavior? So uh, is it 90% accuracy? In a lot of places, for instance, 65% of the grade, that's a passing grade. So you're going to stick to that and say 65% of this math uh, theory, I want them to be able to do. Uh, that means that they pass. Uh, so you may have to look at different rubrics for this. So assessments, there is a reflective assessments. This is when that, there's metacognition. What I mean by that is that the student, in, the, in many cases, will write how he or she got the problem and how he or she solved the problem. So it's thinking about thinking. That's what metacognition is above the cogn is above cognitive levels. Authentic assessments, this is important, the measuring device and the learning objectives are compatible. And alternative assessments, this go beyond traditional paper and pencil. Let me give you an example of authentic assessment, for instance, that uh, we've probably seen. Uh, driving, when you got your driving license, you took a test. That test pretty well was a behavior that you had to do. You had to do certain things. And it was authentic because you knew exactly what you had to do. You were trained for it. And you had to, uh, and then you had to perform that, that, that particular, that particular uh, skill. So I want you to be able to think of that and that in your training or your teaching of the students that it actually matches the assessment that you're going to use. So if you teach them how to solve quadratic equations and you tell them in a certain way and this is what you expect and then the assessment has nothing to do or very little to the way you taught, then that's not authentic. So let's see if we can keep going through this without having that pop-up annoying me here. So there's a two basic purposes of assessment, and this is to determine whether the how the extent this is a, the uh, they've reached the objectives and to diagnose their strengths. Again, this is part of knowing the student. The second part is the process of it. This is when you'll see some teachers give partial credit because they had the work right, and then showing the work is another way of metacognition, by the way. So, and we'll keep going through this. So, diagnosis and placement, formative instructional planning, and end of the course summative evaluation. So, these are the purposes of the assessment as well. So, I'm going to send you this uh, PowerPoint because my time is limited on this uh, particular YouTube here. I don't want to go over my allotted time. So, you can look at this, but I want you to, to be able to get an idea of some of the examples that students can use to demonstrate their the, and the conditions. They can do individual projects, rubrics, uh, graded projects, group projects, and so on. So these are all different ways. This is a way to show that there's just more than just paper and pencil tests that you can give writing about mathematics. Maybe they can write a poem or a story based on certain types of mathematics. There are some math levels of mathematics that are not going to make sense but you should try that. And then finally using rubrics and there are many examples of rubrics uh, that you can find online and uh, so this is a uh, you can grade them in a certain grade with numbers or you can give uh, letter grades or you can just give uh, uh, just words which when you're dealing with certain students and their parents just don't like so sometimes they like to see the A but when you have this as a rubric this the student knows exactly what he or she has to reach and has to do in order to reach the highest level. So that's what you want to do. Don't hide the uh, the assessment and also the rubric from your students. So basically, that's the that's the spiel that I had. And I uh, again, you can look at assessment on the, in the book and see the different examples. Uh, so the author here has many of these and he uses data driven instruction that will that will inform your own teaching and there's a, there are a lot of different ways this is a here's an example of metacognition and writing about it and especially in this example here you'll see that sometimes with the way they write it will be an alternative way to solve a problem that you did not expect okay so that would be one of the uh, things to see about not only in, but allowing students to be part of their assessment is to really let them be creative. So there's a lot of information here. You've probably been working with your mentor teacher in terms of how to, to uh, assess. The book will have, uh, the textbook that you're using will have ideas. So look at all the possible outcomes because as you get to the end of this course, 
an assessment piece will be required in the in the outline I mean in the um, actual unit and we'll have to see how those work you may not end up teaching it but at least you'll have it in place in your unit as a possible tool next semester when you do your student teaching then you will have the ability to possibly use that or another unit that you make and there you put the assessments and you'll also put student work to show that they've reached the particular level that you want them to okay so I hope that you take a look at it I will send the PowerPoint the PowerPoint will be on the on blackboard along with the video uh, link and uh, that's basically it have a good week